Hi guys and welcome to the Casual Weekcast. I'm Ellen and I'm Madeline and let's chat. Yo, Madeline. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Let me give you guys a quick update. I got my booster shot this morning, and I felt like crap for like hours, I think. And then I took Tylenol, and now I'm a different human. I just feel so much better now because I spent the entire day lying on my bed. I did absolutely nothing, so now that I feel great, I'm kind of hyper. So thought I'll give you guys all a quick heads up. What about you, Madeline? What's new with you? What's new with me? Let me think. Earlier this week, my coach finally taught me some parts of the choreography for the competition, and then I guess that's the only thing that's new that I did this week. Oh,、well, I have fun practicing. The choreography, though, it's one of my favorite things to do in figure skating. Wow, really? Wait, so did you do any new moves, or was it like kind of similar to the one that you did last year? Well, this year, since the music is very different, the the moves or the elements are also kind of different. But my coach did not teach me moves that are completely new to me because the competition is in April, and then now it's already February, so she cannot give me a very hard. Choreography, so I would say the moves are kind of the same, but at the same time, it's different. I'm so excited! I'm just so sad that I can't be there, but I'm pretty sure you have a full outfit prepared, and it's gonna match well with the music, and it's gonna be amazing. The crowd's gonna be cheering. Madeline, any <gasps> wait? You should have like a signature, like little stuffed animal. You know how like Yuzu with Winnie the Pooh. You should have like I don't know something. I'm gonna all throw it at you at the rink. Yeah, hopefully the. So it doesn't really happen in the competition. It might level. Oh, you don't want it to happen. It's not that common because in Taiwan the competitions are quite small, so you don't really see plushies being thrown onto the ice like international competitions. That's why I've never seen it. I was so curious why I never saw it. I was like, I want to see that in real life. I see it all the time on YouTube. I want to see what it's like. You know, it doesn't have to happen all the time. I just want to witness it. I'm so sad though. I didn't get to skate. This week, I was going to, but my symptoms were kind of bad, so I didn't get to go. I was gonna say though that I did a little bit of ballet, and man, it's like hard at first when I first started. I was like, "Oh, this is so exciting!" But like now, I'm trying to perfect all the moves. I'm doing the same moves, and it's kind of hard. I get it. Ballet is so detail oriented. There's a certain way you have to point your feet, a certain way you have to plie, a certain way you have to like blah and blah and blah, and then it's kind of challenging. For a beginner to check off the list to do every single detail that you're supposed to do. I know. I honestly don't know how I did as a kid. Like, how did I do all of that? I just find myself repeatedly getting frustrated because I was like, I just want to have some fun. But it's so detail oriented that unless you're like, super passionate about it, it's hard to continue. It's definitely a bit discouraging when you just cannot do the moves correctly, and then your muscles are sore, you are tired, and then you're looking into the video, seeing all of them doing it perfectly. But you can't. I agree that it's definitely something that people need passion for. I don't know. For now, I am doing ballet because it feels nice to twirl around and stuff. But you know, for now, I'm not gonna worry about the little details. Maybe if one day I can find the same passion for it, then maybe I will work on the details. But now I'm just gonna be a clumsy ballerina in my little leotard. Yeah, indeed, it's important to have fun regardless of what you're doing. But anyway, let's talk about the Olympics. I have to say. Hey, guys, I've never been a simp for anyone. I do not simp. But can we talk about Nathan Chan? Like, hello. Like, okay. So can we talk about how good he looked on the ice? First of all, and second of all, like how flawless his performances were. When I watched it, it was after my final. I mean, exam. I was feeling all brain dead after it. And then after I watched that video, I like legit started fangirling. And I was like, oh my god, yes, Nathan. Yes, yes. You deserve the gold medal. Yes. Yeah. I also watched the Olympics. In Pyeongchang, and seeing his performance in 2018, and then seeing it this year, it makes me so proud of him to see him performing so well. Especially at the end of his program, you can tell by his facial expression that he is super happy of what he done. He gave it his all. You can just see it, and it paid off. The hard work did. I'm so proud of his growth. He truly grown so much since his last Olympics. Okay, here's the thing. In the past, I 
I've always just preferred female figure skaters over men. But recently, I've been just loving like men figure skaters. And you know, Nathan was my gateway drug to binge watching men skating. Like that was beautiful. I mean, I've always been into Yuzu. Yuzu is different, you know. He's like he's on a whole another level. You can't compare him to other figure skaters. But I'm opening myself to watch other men besides from Yuzu. And Nathan's the second guy, I guess, that I can really watch all over again. I remember I called my mom for an hour just talking about Nathan because he was that good. I'm usually not a big fan of Nathan because sometimes he seemed to only focus on jumps, but in this Olympics, the energy he brings on the ice is incredible. He looks so energetic, and then he looks so passionate, and then he looked like he was generally having fun. So I especially love the performance he done in this Olympics. That's what I thought so too. In the past, it felt like his performances were too like jump focused. It didn't really feel like a performance. But now it's like you see the artistry and his expression, and you see that it's truly a performance. It's not just about the jumps. Yeah, I agree. Especially in his free skate towards the end of a program, that hip hop choreography was so good. I really like the transition too. When it went from like a more classical kind of music into the more like pop music. I'm talking about a short program, by the way. Wait, that's not a short program. Which one was it that he had the transition? I don't remember. I just remember it went from like a serious, and then it went like this. It went to like a more pop kind. Is it the free skate? Oh yeah, it is. Okay, I remember him wearing the bright red. Okay, yeah, it's that one. That was a good transition. I really like that. It's creative. Also, really like the music. I also like the outfit. Nathan is known for not wearing like bling bling outfits. That one wasn't like that. You know, there isn't any like bling on it. But I like the pop of color. I think that outfit was pretty good compared to other outfit of his. Yeah, I agree. I feel like he always wore black in the past. It's always just black and nothing. I really like the red. I feel like it really suit the music and the style. His music and performance were both energetic, and then his costume was also energetic looking too. It was literal fire. Can we talk about Yuzu? He almost landed that jump though. His four A, so close. I know. And then his quad axle is also certified. Oh, so it's certified? Wait, but what does that mean? According to my knowledge, to have a jump certified is to make sure. That it's not downgraded. His jump is. What do you mean by downgraded? So a downgraded jump is when the jump is missing half of the rotation, and then a under rotated jump is when the jump is missing a quarter of the rotation. The reason why Yuzu jump was certified was because his jump was under rotated, which he only missed a quarter of the rotation. So on the score sheet, it says it's for a under rotation. That is enough for that jump to be certified. Wait, so he technically did break the world record then for the first guy doing a 4A? Yeah, the first skater to have a certified 4A at the Olympics, but it does not count as the first human being to land a quad axle because he still needs to land it. True, true. It's okay. I feel it coming. Yeah, but he still did a good job. He did, and he still won fourth place. That's pretty good because his program is such a high quality that. He He still managed to get really high score despite of his mistake. Yeah, I have a feeling he's not gonna stop competing until he lands that jump. I also want to see him continue to compete until he lands his quad axle. I have full faith he will. Just knowing him, he's not even trying to win the gold medal. He's just trying to land a jump. Yeah, he's putting all of his focus on landing that jump. And then he's so close. He is so close at the Olympics. I'm pretty sure he's gonna land it one day. My guess is he probably already did, but probably. In practice, oh yeah, he obviously is confident enough to put the quad axle into his program. Oh wait, Madeline, have you heard anything about the Russian skater Kamila Valieva? Yeah, have you heard about what happened? The hearing is gonna be tomorrow on Monday, and so during the hearing, her fate will be determined whether she will be disqualified or allowed to compete. But yeah, basically, what happened was there's this Russian skater that landed. What jump was it, Madeline? In the team event, 
she landed a quad sow cow. The quad sow cow is the second easiest jump in the quad jump. And then by landing that jump, Camila became the first woman to land a quad in the Olympics. Okay, speaking of, you know, we're talking about Olympics and skating. Tell me your favorite moment. What was your favorite? There's a skater called Yuma Kagiyama. This is his first Olympics and then he's only 18. And then he did so well. I remember his show program was basically clean. And then his free skate was almost clean. I just checked his score sheet. Yuma's short program was entirely clean. And then during his free skate, although he under rotated his quad loop and then had to add a three turn, but otherwise his entire program was clean. So he did so good. When I first saw him, I was like surprised because first of all, I don't know who he was. And then I was like, wait, he's 18? Yeah, he's definitely going to be one of the skaters who's going to carry Japanese figure skating on his back. And he is so incredibly consistent. I don't know how he trained his mind to be that strong. I know, he's just self-composed. And also, he's making it seem like, yeah, I'm just an 18 year old going to Olympics. Not a big deal. That's the vibe I get from him. I know, he is so chill about everything. Yeah, this year's Olympic was pretty good. You know, there's so many good moments. My favorite was just watching men figure skating. So, let's talk about something else. This is completely random, but it's just after my dad got my booster shot today and then when I started feeling headache and I wasn't feeling that well so I called my mom and I was just kind of like ranting to her just simply because I wasn't feeling well and my mom was so chill it was such a weird experience you know I've been reflecting a lot recently just about the past and stuff and it made me realize my mom was such a strict mom and how she's so chill with me just like giving her a little bit of attitude <laughs> when I was calling her it's just so weird it made me realize that my mom over the years has just gotten a lot more chill and yeah, I can definitely relate because my mom used to be super duper strict when I was younger but now I'm an adult and then she has become a lot chiller. I always ask her for permission about a lot of stuff and then she'll always reply with why are you even asking me? You should be able to make your own decision. I had a similar experience too. I think I even told my mom some of my weird goals that I have that were in the past if I were to say something like that my mom would be like that's stupid don't think about that and then my mom was like sure okay if you want to do it then just do it. I'm like what the heck? I know that moms change when you get older obviously they're not gonna baby you because you're not a baby anymore but it's so weird how supportive she is i've never really felt that supported in the past when i had weird random goals and now she's just like yeah if you feel that way then just do it i actually have a little bit of a different feeling than yours now i feel a bit lost because in the past before i get into any trouble my mom will scold me first she'll yell at me or tell me that i shouldn't have done that and then now she will correct me after i get into trouble or after i made the mistake also she is less strict but oftentimes i just feel like i wish that she can still stick her nose into my business so then i won't get into trouble without knowing it i know what you mean you're saying you feel like you're walking on eggshells like you don't know what to do right because like if you do the wrong thing then she gets mad at you but if you ask her then she's like why are you asking me so you're like oh what am i supposed to do yeah exactly no i definitely feel you i think i have experienced that but it's not so much anymore i think it's mostly because she's in taiwan and i'm in the u.s it's harder for her to be mad about things like that i'm not saying if i'm back home that she's just gonna treat me how i was when i was younger she's definitely gonna be more chill still but for example if i'm i can't think of anything at the moment so i'm just gonna say slouching my mom used to get mad at me for slouching okay i have the worst posture and my mom used to get so mad at me for it. back in high school we used to live in a dorm and then during that time i did feel that when there's distance between you and your parents your parents would not be as strict because they cannot discipline you whenever they want to yeah distance definitely makes a difference well today we talked about olympics talked about moms pretty chill i got my booster shot today so i think i'm gonna go to rest so let's talk next time then so see you guys next week bye, bye.